India is an ancient society with a kaleidoscope of people who speak more than 340 languages and 1,000 dialects. The country is the second most populated in the world, with 1.2 billion people. By 2030, India will surpass China as the most populated country. It is home to a number of religious traditions, including Hindu, Muslim, Christian, Sikh, Buddhist, and Jain. More than 20 million of the population are Roman Catholic. One fact about India stands above all the rest. It is home to one-third of the poorest people on the planet. The Marianists came to India in 1980 because they felt called to share their love and concern for the poorest of the poor. The challenges of poverty in India start in rural villages where drought, lack of education, job scarcity, and a burgeoning population are overwhelming. Stories of a better life in the city lure young people to leave their villages to find work in the big cities of Mumbai, Delhi, and Bangalore. But with little education, no job skills, and no family to watch out for them, city life is dangerous, and the slums, where most end up, are unimaginable. What happens with uh, people when they move to the city, they don't have an education and they don't have any skill. And so they migrate to these slum areas. And for some of them, they, they become what they call rag pickers there. And it's kind of a derogatory term, but it's people who pick through the garbage. And they look for pieces of plastic or anything that they can recycle. And then they take these to uh, collection centers and they're given some small money for the things that they're able to, to pick during the day. But it's a horrible profession. And it's not only the parents, but it's also the children, and children are born into that. And you have these little kids picking through garbage, trying to find plastic bottles or plastic caps or pieces of cloth that uh, then can help the family to get something to sustain themselves. Well, it's not much of a life. After arriving in India, the Marianists settled in two main locations, Bangalore, a city in southern India, and Ranchi, a city in northern India. They focused their efforts on education and job training programs. To address the most pressing needs of the poor, the Marianists adopted two strategies. Urban empowerment programs provide schooling and help for street children and job training for adults so that families in city slums can gain a foothold in life. Rural empowerment programs provide formal schools and training programs for children and families in small towns and villages. The programs enable students to receive a quality Marianist education and job training for adults so they can earn a living in their villages and stop the feudal migration to cities. One example of rural empowerment is the Shamanad Rural Development Project. Well, the Shamanad Rural Development Project is a, uh, a project that is centered in uh, a place called Binda. It's a very poor rural area and uh, several components to it. We, we have a primary school. Primary school was there for many, many years and it was a, a series of ramshackle buildings. Uh, the brothers in the last number of years have been able to build a really very fine facility and Children there, I believe, run uh, K through seven or six or seven now. So we're, we're dealing with the, with the young children. Those kids also get a hot meal every day. And they've just recently begun a hostel facility so that children don't have to trek in from the rural areas every day. To empower the villagers of Binda to become self-sufficient, the Marianists started job training aimed at helping young women the programs teach basic tailoring and sewing skills. This enables women to do piecework for local vendors or start their own businesses. The Marianists also started self-help groups to teach villagers about saving money and starting businesses. They recently opened a lab to teach basic computer skills. 
The Rural Development Project touches the lives of more than 21,000 people. The Marianists started working in the slums of Bangalore in 1992 and in Ranchi in 1997 through REDS, an urban empowerment program with drop-in centers designed to help street children. We bring them in the centers and they can come for a day or two days or three days and they find out this is safe. They are taught games, they taught, they're taught dance, they're taught songs, things that every kid ought to have in his life where these kids didn't ever have this. So they're taught to play, number one, but they're also taught basic English, basic math, they get health care. Sanitation is very important uh, with these kids to wash their hands, for example, not to drink water that's not boiled. All these types of things, uh, we teach them where they live and gradually they come to us and they come to stay. And they come to stay in these red centers. Then we work very hard at getting them an education and getting them into formal education. To further help children, the Marianists realized they needed to address the needs of the whole family, especially mothers. When you, when you educate or, or empower a mother, you're also empowering the whole family. That's not to say the men are not important, but mothers have a certain, uh, have a special role to play. To help mothers and children, Marianists started play schools and daycare centers. They launched tutoring and after-school programs for students so they can study and receive a hot meal. Today, these programs serve more than 3,000 children. The Marianists also began offering training programs for women to learn tailoring, embroidery, machine knitting, and computer basics, as well as classes in family health and wellness. One of the most effective things they have done is help women organize self-help groups, a form of microfinancing, which enable women to manage and save their income. They now run more than 40 self-help groups in the slums of India. Despite these efforts, thousands of children, especially young adolescents, were left on their own. To address the needs of adolescent boys, the Marianists operate skills training centers that provide a safe environment away from street life where they can learn a trade, such as welding, plumbing, electrical applications, carpentry, tailoring, and computer basics. Beside training, we try to give them, uh, create an atmosphere like their own family, that's the main thing. We are not just focused on uh, their skill aspect of uh, life. We are more interested about the whole human development, the personality development aspect. You know, one of the things that uh, is, is very difficult for people who are poor is a sense of self-worth and a sense of respect. When a young person can succeed in school, when a, uh, a teenager can succeed at some kind of job skill training that really boosts the self-confidence, that probably as much as anything is, is what real development, it's, a, it's about development of the person. Today, more than 100 Indian Marianist brothers and priests partner with the poor in these programs. The results are impressive. It's exciting. I can tell you the story a number of kids who came to the Red Centers in Ranchi or in Bangalore and who actually now have a full-time job raising their own families, raising their own kids. And it's a beautiful thing to see because we really, really understand uh, how our efforts are paying off. Not everybody can go to India. But people can certainly be aware, first of all, be aware of our, our Catholic sense that uh, we have a responsibility for everybody in the body of Christ, to pray for a, a more just world and a more fair world, to be more sensitive to how we live and the standards that we have for ourselves and how we um, use and, and very often abuse the abundance that we have and not to take it for granted and then to be generous. I have found people have been extraordinarily generous, extraordinarily generous, and people there know that, and they really appreciate. And all I can say is a little bit goes a long way. That kind of support really encourages us and allows us to service the people there and to help them.